Hello brothers and sisters, today is another bright new day that the Lord has made and uh, we are going to rejoice in it and be glad in it as we study His Word. And uh, in today's Bible study, today's Bible study lesson, we are going to answer this one very mind-blowing question that most people always ask. What are the core beliefs of Christianity? What are the core beliefs of Christianity? Hope you're seated on a comfortable seat. Hope you have a pen, a notebook, and your Bible. Then um, let's get started. All right. Now we understand that the term Christianity seems to imply a religious system in the same way that Islam and Buddhism are religious systems. Within uh, religious systems are core beliefs along with codes, rules and standards that must be mastered in order to achieve a desired end. And Christianity does not fit that definition and uh, therefore the term can uh, slightly be misleading. Because Jesus did not come into the world to start another religion. That's, that's for a fact. And there, because there were already plenty of religions out there. Remember the Bible, what it says in the book of Acts 22 verse 23. Paul, he was in, um, he went to Athens and he found people worshipping some unknown God. Let me read. This one for you. Acts 17, 23 Then Paul stood in the midst of mass hills and said, You men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you, you are too superstitious. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God. Hmm. Getting the point here? So... <laughs> These many religions also included Judaism, which had uh, began as a relationship with the Almighty God. Remember Leviticus 20 verse 12? And if a man lie with his daughter-in-law, both of them shall surely be put to death. They have wrought confusion. Their blood shall be upon them. But of course we understand even Judaism had deteriorated into another religious system on par with uh, idol worship. Okay. Think about Matthew 15 verse 8 It says These people draw it nigh unto me with their mouth and they, are, and they honor me with their lips But their heart is far from me Do you see the point now? And Jesus came to bear witness to the truth John 18 verse 37 Pilate therefore said unto him Are thou a king then? Jesus answered Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end I was born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Do you see? So Jesus came to bear witness to the truth, and of course, to seek and to save the lost, those who are separated from God by their sin. Think about Luke 19.10. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Okay? Jesus came to seek and save those who are lost. Another thing that Jesus came to do is uh, to give his life as a ransom for many. Mark 10.32 He came to give his life as a ransom for many. So, with all that said, those who follow Christ do share some core beliefs. Biblically speaking, Christians are those who are forgiven of their sins and who have entered a personal relationship with the Almighty God through faith in Jesus Christ. Ephesians 2 8, 9, the Bible says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man, any man should boast. Romans 10 9 10. If you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in your heart that the Lord has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For in the heart a man believes unto righteousness, 
and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So guys, you have to understand that uh, in order to become a Christian, a person must fully accept as part of his or our own personal worldview the following core beliefs. And I'll say them one by one. The first thing that you have to understand and believe is that Jesus is the Son of God and is equal with God. John 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus is that Word. Of course, in verse 14 says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So, Jesus is God. John 1 verse 49 says, Nathanael answered and said unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God, thou art the King of Israel. Luke 22 70, Then said they all, Art thou the Son of God? And he adds unto, uh, unto them, Ye say that I am. Gain the point? Mark 3 11. And unclean spirits, when they saw him, fell down before him and cried, saying, Thou art the Son of God. Philippians 2 5 downwards it says, Let this mind be new, which also which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself no of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and he was made in the likeness of men so I don't know if you have understood for sure Jesus is the son of God and is equal with God another thing that you have to believe for you to be a Christian is that Jesus lived a perfect sinless life Hebrews 4.15 says for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin so Jesus lived a sinless life huh? John 8 29 and he that sent me is with me the father has not left me alone for I do always those things that please him Now, do you understand that Jesus lived a perfect, sinless life and that's the kind of life that he wants us to live? Okay? And uh, you, you can say you're, you're Christ-like and you don't believe that Jesus was sinless. Another thing is that Jesus was crucified to pay the penalty for our sin. Look at Matthew 26, 28. The Bible says, For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. This is the blood shed for the remission of sins of many. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which you received and wherein you stand, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I deliver unto you first that which also received. How? that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures that's the gospel another thing that you have to put in your mind is that Jesus rose from the dead okay Luke 24 46 and said unto them thus it is written and thus it behoved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day also Mark 16 verse 6 and he said unto them be not affrighted you seek Jesus of Nazareth which was crucified he's risen he's not here behold the place where they laid him so that's something that you have to understand that Jesus really rose from the dead and one more thing is that uh, you have to believe that we are saved by grace of God. That is, we cannot add to or take away from Christ's finished work at the cross as full payment for our sin. We can't add. 
Ephesians 2 8, 9 tells us, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. It is a gift. Okay? So it could be argued that uh, belief in the inerrancy of God's word is also a core belief of Christianity because if the Bible's veracity is suspect, then all we know about God is in doubt. Saving faith is a uh, extricably linked to the word of God because the Bible tells us in Romans 10 17 faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God so you must have that faith okay faith is a <laughs> it's 100% linked to the word of God but the mental acceptance of the above points of doctrine is only the framework around which salvation occurs faith is more than intellectual assent and mentally agreeing with the core beliefs of Christianity does not equal entrance into God's kingdom. Even Satan and the demons know certain things about God. Are they saved? No. James 2.19 says, Thou believest that there is one God. Thou does well. The devils also believe and tremble. Are, are you seeing this? Because guys, we can mentally agree with facts without making those facts the centerpiece of our lives can a person be saved without holding to the core beliefs of Christianity no but along with accepting as true those core beliefs must be a spiritual transformation Jesus said that in order to inherit eternal life one must be born again John 3.3 Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So to be born again is a work of the Holy Spirit in the heart of a repentant sinner. Just as a mother in labor does all the work in bringing forth a new life, so the Holy Spirit does the work in transforming a sinner into a new creature. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things have passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And of course, uh, we understand that this process begins when God draws a heart through conviction of sin and uh, hope of forgiveness. John 6.44 says, No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him, and I will raise him up on the last day guys ho ho hope you understand in this that when we surrender to God and repent of our sin God applies the blood of his own son to account and cancel the debt that we owed him alright when you surrender to God and repent think about Acts 2.38 then Peter said unto them repent repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit so we have to repent turn out from our, our evil ways from believing in other things repentance basically means just turn your mind from unbelief to belief alright and then Jesus will apply his own blood to cancel our debt of sin Colossians 2.14 says blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that were against us which was contrary to us and it took it took out of the way nailing it at the cross so your sins were nailed at the cross and they were left there and by this act of transference God pronounces us as not guilty he basically justifies us Romans 4.5 it says, But to him that worketh not, but believes on him that justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Hmm. So, salvation is a divine exchange. Jesus becomes our sin so that you can become his perfection. Okay? It's, it's just an exchange. He took our sins, we took his righteousness. 2 Corinthians 5.21 For he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And this is the gospel at the very core 
of Christianity. Getting the point? All right. And that's the end of our today's Bible study lesson. Hope it was a blessing to you. I hope to see you in the next one.